Hello everyone, welcome to the next episode of Crusader Kings 2 House Trump. So as I explained previously, and as it explains here, this is a game where you play as medieval rulers from a dynasty. It's not a conquer everything in sight game, although you can do that. It's more about, your, you know, your family, keeping your family alive, getting heirs, and it's mainly about political intrigue. There is a DLC called Conclave that adds a lot more political intrigue, but it kind of just confused me, so I'm not, I've not used that here. So, yes. So let me just explain. This is the map you can see around the world, and the interesting thing that I love about this game is... Here we are, here is our family. Yet, in all these other places, there are other characters with their own families, with their own interests. Not only here, but also here. And simply, around the world, everywhere. And all these AI characters are all doing their own things, vying for their own goals, and I just love how all these stories come together. That's why I do like this game a lot. So, this is a... But we are over here. This is our land. The county of Bukan. Our capital. We have a castle, which we can build things in. We have a bishop brick, which has a bishop in it that pays us taxes. We also have a city. We'll look at our vassals in a minute. This is us. And these are our stats. So as you can see, we have diplomacy. Now what diplomacy does is it helps improve relations with other people around us. Because we're being diplomatic. Marshal is how good you are at leading armies and fighting. Stewardship is how good you are at ruling, so it affects how much your demesne size over here. The higher your stewardship, the more lands you can directly control. Because if you're bad at stewarding, you're not very good at ruling lands. Intrigue is self-explanatory, it's how good we are at killing people. Learning is how good we are with spiritual stuff. And this tells us what titles we have, what claims we have, and if we have any alliances. Here are our stats. So you can see that Arbitrary, this character could not care less about justice, lowers our stewardship. Because if we're not, me me if we're not uh, giving out justice, we're not ruling properly, so our stewardship goes down. Our learning also goes down, because if we're not just, we're not exactly following the church teachings. Wrath increases our marshal, because we have a hot temper. So obviously, our marshal goes up, because when we're angry, we fight. Our intrigue goes down, because we're not the suave Tyrion Lannister type person. Our diplomacy also goes down, because we get angry at people. Greedy. Our diplomacy goes down, because we tell people to pay tax. You know, we tell people to pay more tax. I'm just going to take a sip of my drink here. We tell people to pay more tax, and we get more tax. Lustful, our fertility goes up, our intrigue goes up, the church doesn't like us anymore. Well, the church likes us less, and our monthly piety goes down. Fortune builder, we're good at business, so we're good at fighting. We're not that good at diplomacy, because I'm guessing we screwed a bunch of people over. We're really good at stewardship, because... Obviously, this is the business trait, and we're good at learning, because the church likes earning money. Fertility also goes up, I guess, because, I don't know, women like money? I honestly don't know why fertility goes up if you're good at business. And these are things that we can measure our score by. So we have wealth, that's how much money we have. Prestige is our score. How much prestige we have shows us how good we are doing at the game. How well renowned we are. We need prestige to get certain stuff done, like fabricating claims. We also need it for our score at the end, so we can compare ourselves to real life families. Piety is, you know, we need it to get things from the church. Domain size, that's how you pronounce it, domain. Domain size, how many lands we can rule without our vassals hating us. And our vassals, and our total score, which is, I think, a combination of all of these and then an average. Not quite sure how that is calculated, but it is. And this is events, it shows up what's happening. And there are various map modes as well. Terrain, self-explanatory, shows us how the world looks. 
so there's desert down here and there's rugged mountains and as you can see Scotland has mountains and is a quite hilly place. The realms, which is sort of our political map, shows us independent realms that aren't under anyone, so the King of England is obviously not under anyone. Scotland is not under anyone either, but these counts in Ireland also don't have a king ruling over them. They're just landed people. The Holy Roman Empire is an empire level title, so he would actually have kings underneath him. And he's independent and no one's higher than him. Poland, and you get the point. We also have the Byzantine Empire down here. Which I think... No, I don't think there's any kingdoms in here. No, there's no kingdoms there yet. D diplomatic relations shows us our relations with people around us. If I click on people, it will give me different information. So if I wanted to know who likes the King of England, I can see here that this light green area is bland he owns. We have this other green area, here is the vassals that like him, and Scotland doesn't like him that much. And this belongs to Norway, who he's at war with, because of Harald Hadrada. Religion, again, self-explanatory. Culture, so French down here. Norman, Anglo-Saxon, Anglo-Saxon, Scottish, Irish, and that is Welsh, but it's the same colour as the Irish for some reason. I don't think they'd like that somehow. Economy, again, we can see that Western Europe is rich. This is not Scandinavia, isn't very wealthy. Eastern Europe isn't very wealthy. And neither is uh, Arabia. Well, at least the centre of Arabia. The edges are quite wealthy. And the Iberian Peninsula is also quite wealthy. De jure duchies. I'll get into the de jure stuff later. Revolt risk, also pretty self-explanatory. It's pretty green throughout. There's some a revolt risk in uh, Kala Latude. This place on my on the Iberian Peninsula. There's also a revolt up here. Not a revolt, just a large amount of revolt risk. And dynasties, as you can see for now, of Godwin. House Godwinson rules England. Dunkeld rules Scotland. Carpet. Opinions. Direct vassals, trade zones, governments. Yes, yeah, governments. We are feudal. They are tribal. And this is Iktar. And there's a tribe down here as well, these sort of West African tribes. Mandy, West African. So let's take a look at our land. Bukan. It's a county? Part of the De Jure Duchy of Marais. So we are under a duke. We are Earl Donald of Bukan. And we can choose an ambition. We can become Chancellor, become our Legion's Marshal, become Steward. Oh, before I do that, I should show you about the Council. So we have a Council in this game. We appoint the characters under us to do things for us. So Chancellor, he's our sort of diplomat. He needs high diplomacy, obviously. And the highest person we've got is Nine, which isn't very good. It's not ideal, but he's the best we have. And he doesn't really like me. He doesn't like me because we we don't care about justice and our personal diplomacy is really bad. Usually you want people who like you on your council because then they won't plot to kill you. But maybe if I give him this council position he will like me. As you can see his opinion went up because I gave him a council position. So you can really see how this game does bring out the political intrigue and all the stuff you love from Game of Thrones. Because Game of Thrones is based on actual medieval history. So Marshall, we want someone who can fight. 14. And again, he doesn't like me. But by giving him this position, he will like me. 
so we'll do that. Number three, Spy Master. Now he, now this is an important position because I need him to tell me if someone's gonna kill me or one of my family members. Man with the highest injury doesn't like me, but now he likes me. So now we can get them to do things. Uh, I don't know what's happened here. Maybe this was added in for a DLC, or maybe it's one of my other mods making the game glitch a bit, but usually there was only three. So we can get our Chancellor to improve diplomatic relations, fabricate claims, sow dissent. This is how we get claims to declare war, this is how we make other people dislike each other, and we can improve relations. So right now, let's have a look at the King. King Malcolm III of Scotland. He likes us by a tiny bit. He's brave. He's deceitful. He's cynical. So he likes to lie and he thinks the world is not that he's a bit of a pessimist. He's a brave, deceitful pessimist who gets angry sometimes. But he's a dutiful cleric. The dutiful cleric is learned and possessed of beautiful penmanship, but lacks particular interest in theology. I wonder what he would have zero learning without this trait, that's kind of funny. He owns the county of Gowrie and the kingdom of Scotland, and his heir is Prince Duncan of Scotland, who is his son for now. Oh, Scotland has agnatic conatic primogeniture. Oh, uh, I'm I'm confusing my games. I'm, I'm I did play a a game set in an earlier time period, and Scotland has I think Tanistry, or some sort of elective monarchy. But we have primogeniture for now, which means agnatic cognatic means males inherit, but if there are no males, females can inherit. Primogeniture means the eldest son inherits. So Prince Duncan of Scotland. So let's actually improve relations with him. Or should we? Yes, he is our liege, so we aren't actually under the Duchy of Marais. But we are a du jour part of the Duchy of Marais. Hmm. Anyway, let's improve relations with the king. So I'll click here. As you can see, improve relations with Lord 12.16%. Sabotage relations with Lord 10.13. Those are the probabilities that we will get this done. Hmm, I don't like that the sabotage relations one is high and quite close to the improved relations one. You know what, we're not going to get you to do anything because your, your skill is so low that you'll just make matters worse. As for our Marshal, research military tech, train troops, that increases the size of our levies, which is our army. Hmm. I think for now we'll just get him to train troops. Collect taxes. Our steward can collect taxes. OC construction, so if we're building anything it will go faster. A research economy technology. You can see in the possible outcomes there that the peasants attack the stewards for collecting their taxes is higher than the special tithe collected. The chance that he will get attacked by peasants is higher than the chance that he will collect taxes from peasants, so I'm not going to get him to do that. I'm also not going to get him to do this, because he can meet the master builder, or the construction can be sabotaged, and that's a high percentage chance, so no. I'm just going to get him to research economy tech, to improve our technology. I want the Spy Master to scheme, make sure no one's gonna kill me, and I want... Wait on the court chaplain for now. Next we have our laws, it gives us our inheritance laws. We are gavel kind, that means our lands will be divided to our children. So if we had the Kingdom of Scotland, for example, and we had Ga the Duchy of Murray and the County of Gowrie, under Gavelkind, our eldest child would get the Kingdom of Scotland, our second eldest child would get the Duchy of Murray, and our third eldest child would get the County of Gowrie. So it kind of splits titles up among family members. And it's not that good if you want to you know, keep the titles close together, prevent your family from getting power and trying to oust you. 
crown laws of the Kingdom of Scotland apply in the county of Buchan because we are under the Kingdom of Scotland. Obligations, so this is where we can get our lords to pay more tax. It's on none at the moment because we have no feudal lords, we only have a mayor and a bishop. The mayors are the cities, so we can get our mayors to pay more tax, so we can get the church to pay more tax. Technology is how we improve. We can't improve any anything yet. Military. This is how many troops we can raise. This is how many troops we can get from our vassals. So we can see the mayor and the church will give us 42 guys. Not a lot really, but you know, it is just a city and a church. We do have a lot of ships though. Intrigue. Oh, this has changed. I like the look of this, I've not seen this before. We can do various things. We can also plot to kill the queen, kill the heir, uh, and just kill a bunch of random people. Factions, no factions yet, they'll pop up soon if people want things. Religion, we are Catholic, the Pope does not like us at all because he doesn't like lustful. <laughs> Doesn't like greedy, doesn't like arbitrary, and doesn't like wrath. So Donald Trump, if he lived here, would be hated by the church. And there are no known societies. What on earth? I've... This is new to me. I, I think I need to go and read the patch notes, because obviously there was an update without me knowing. So, there's that, our council sorted. So now we have these tabs we have to get through. We have no air. Yep, we have no children. We also have no parents, because apparently we were just dropped here from... Dropped here from the sky. Which is kind of true, because we just replaced the historical guy who is here and just created our own character. But it does mean if we die now... Our dynasty just dies, because we are the only one of our family left. So we have to sort that out, we have to have some children. And yes, we will lose the title, because if no one, if there's no one to inherit this, it will go back to the king, and the king will just give it to someone else. We're unmarried, yes. Pick an ambition. Now, ambitions are things we can do. And I think the one we're going to pick is become king of Scotland. Not yet, not yet. Maybe in time. Become exalted among men. I think actual Donald Trump would want to do this, but he probably would want to get married first, so we'll get married there. Now we have to choose a character focus. Business, this gives us bonuses depending on so if we choose business it gives us more stewardship. Intrigue, but I think we're gonna go for family. Because it gives us diplomacy, it gives us more fertility, and gives us more health. And that's what we really need. We need more diplomacy, we need more fertility to have heirs, and we need more health. So we'll select that. We can make someone the designated regent. I think I will make my wife the regent when I get married. A regent takes over if you become incapable or you're a child. And I have council members doing nothing. Yeah, but that's because they're kind of really bad at what they do. So let's find a wife. We want someone... Now this is going to sound really awful, but you have to remember this is medieval times. And uh, older women will not give you heirs, so you need to find someone young. Ah, oh dear. Although I don't think that would be a problem for a, uh, um, Earl Donald of Buchanan. Anyway. But we are young as well, 27, so we can find someone. Now, I want someone who will have lots of heirs, so is there anyone here who has the lustful trait? Yes. We have a courtier somewhere in... Catalan. So we can... See, I don't think that's realistic. I don't think we would go all the way down there to marry her. So... Hmm. Let's see. There's also this Norman girl. There's also this Welsh girl. Hmm. I tell you what, I've done enough talking for now, we'll find the wife in the next episode. 
and we'll also take a look at our vassals and see if they like us and if they don't what we can do to make it better. Thanks for watching, see you later.